Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bad Big Games. I'm your host, Joseph. Today, we're going to talk about EA canceling Visceral's Star Wars game and terminating the studios. We're going to talk about the termination of single-player games and if games and services are the true future of gaming. So let's get into it, shall we? All right. EA. They terminated that long-awaited Star Wars game made by Amy Hedging and the Visceral team. And I want to be mad. I really want to be upset. Visceral is an amazing studio that deserves better than what they were dealt. You know, I love Amy Hedging's. Uncharted is one of the reasons why I love PlayStation as much as I do. It's why I have a PlayStation podcast. I love Star Wars. It's my favorite franchise. And I'm dying to get a, a game where it's just me, myself, and I, a story and with a universe I love so very much. But I gotta come to terms with it. I can't be mad at EA. Because they just saw where the cards fell. And they see that single player games aren't worth their time and aren't worth their effort. You know, EA said that one of the reasons why they terminated this game is because they wanted and wanted a different direction. They wanted a more online focus rather than single player focus. Can we blame them? I mean, in a situation like this, you're looking at it a mile away. You're not getting all the information that's been happening. So we kind of have to take EA at their word. Something went wrong in development. And when you see, and I think EA sees it, games as services are where at least the industry seems like it's going at the moment. EA sees games like Overwatch, they see games like Rainbow Six, they see games like Destiny 2, and they go, well, why not our games? Why not our series? Why not just not just do it with Anthem, but let's do it with a Star Wars game? Because we're going to get all those Star Wars nerds on board. I think Disney was okay with it. That's why EA did what they did. Because I think also Disney wants a piece of that microtransaction pie. Remember, EA is not the sole evil in this story. And again, I don't think they're evil entirely because they look at the landscape and look, every game that comes out has microtransactions. Every single one, right? The ones that do fall short and they fail and they flop. L take a look at Evil Within 2, right? The news of the UK charts say that, that Evil Within 2 sold a quarter of what Evil Within 1 had. Can we blame EA for looking at that and going, that's a big risk we're taking and that's not a reward that we want. When a game is either with, with single player games nowadays being hit or miss, they can't afford to miss. Even if it's with a franchise like Star Wars, they can't afford to miss. They can't afford an okay game because games nowadays cost more and more and more to produce. So they want big results. They don't want big results on day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. They want day big, big results on day one through day 365 and beyond because that's where the games industry is going. Look at look at um, Rainbow Six Siege. When that game came out, small community. You could even say that that day one was not impressive. Maybe if it wasn't a, a games as service game, it would have failed. But we saw people like the game enough. People got their friends into it. And it continued to grow over time. We started seeing it in the top 10 list over and over again. Maybe not at number one, maybe at number three, four, or five, but it was there for months. And now, Rainbow Six Siege is a big deal to Ubisoft. They see Rainbow Six Siege as one of their big cash cows. They think of Rainbow Six Siege as a huge success. And can you blame them? The game prints them money week in, week out. That game is still continuing to make them money. Look at Overwatch, right? Came out last year, was our game of the year last year. Is that game the same game it was when it released? Absolutely not. There's more maps, there's more characters, there's more modes. Yeah, and there's microtransactions in it. And yeah, Overwatch is a huge deal. Millions of people play it. Millions of people love it. They have their own tournaments. They're going to have their own Visa card. It's, it's, it's huge. It's printing them money. Look at Destiny. Prints, cash, they could give microtransactions and season passes, and you're okay with it. So when EA sees games like that, can you blame them for terminating this game? No. 
When you see games like Shadow of War have microtransactions, Assassin's Creed have microtransactions, just don't wonder why it's obvious. Because if this game fails, at least five, ten, a couple thousand people go out and buy a microtransaction, they start making their, their money back. It's a, it's a safe way of going, you know what, if this fails, at least we can make some money on the long term with it, right? That's what this is all about. You know, what we're about nowadays, guys, is the budgets being bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. We're all about what looks the best. Look at gaming generations as they go on. We are obsessed with looks. Something has to look miraculous for us to care. Look at when the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One came out, right? It wasn't the biggest graphical leap. And you had stories like, well, is this really a, a, a full step or a half step in this generation? Not, not coming into account that, you know, maybe physics, maybe animation, maybe AI are going to greatly improve because of the tech. People only cared about what's at face value. Look at, at before I just did the John Cena thing, but look at what what we saw in the beginning of this generation with the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Every single game that came out, it looks better on PlayStation 4. It look, It's 1080p on PlayStation 4, only 900p on, 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 on Xbox. You know, and now we're at to this point again where it's, hey, games look better on the Xbox One X than they do on the PlayStation 4 Pro. Which one are you going to buy? It's like we only care about what looks better than what's actually in the box, right? What's really under the hood. What What's really going to advance games is not how a game looks, but how a game fucking plays. But we, the majority of us out there, don't seem to fucking care. We don't. Yeah, Horizon looks really great, but it also plays really great and tells an amazing story. You know, Cuphead is a game that graphically doesn't look that, that intensive, but guess what, guys? It's really fucking beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful games I've ever seen, and it's going to last the test of time. That game is going to age way better than what any game is going to be this generation. Any game, even Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, this game Cuphead's going to age better than that. Because guess what? It's not about what looks the best. It's about their art direction they chose. But we are obsessed about what looks well. We are at 1080p and some games can barely do 60 FPS. We are already jumping to 4K. So when companies and studios are obsessed with it has to look better it has to feel better it has to look better than its sequel right look at destiny to destiny 2 oh the, the game looks the same as this destiny 1.5 we're that obsessed about looks that we don't look at what's under the hood we don't whatsoever so when companies look at this they go well that's what people want and they start pushing the envelope of what looks good. They don't give a shit anything else. They don't give a shit what it's all about looks and marketing. And games, because of that, are becoming more and more expensive. And games prices, 60 bucks, it's been that way for 10 plus years. Games today are cheaper than they ever been 10 years ago. And that's a huge fucking deal. So if you're a publisher, if you're a developer out there, are you going to up it by 10 bucks? Are you going to up your game price by 20 bucks? Are you going to give the price of what you believe your game is worth? Absolutely fucking not. Because they've done their research. Nobody's going to buy a game that's that's 10 bucks extra. Very few. people are Not, not a lot of people are going to buy a game that's 80 bucks, right? They've done their research, so what do they go? We're going to do microtransactions. We're going to take get things that were once in the game, like customization options. We're going to take away things like cheat codes that were once in the game. We're going to put them behind these, these little boxes that you get to bet on, that you get to put money on. That's what matters now. So when you look at a game like Overwatch, you go, well, that's that future is not too bad because, hey, at least they give you, you know, free content over time, right? But then you have to remember to yourself that not everybody blizzard that you're going to have some people like Bungie some people like Activision out there that when they're running their games they go yeah put a season pass in there and put a couple of microtransactions in there take some things that were out of Destiny 1 put them behind a paywall and who gives a shit they're gonna kick they're gonna scream but it's pure profit some people are gonna go a little bit over and beyond like Battlefront 2 with EA and go yeah no some some we're gonna tie progression actual abilities and put them behind paywalls because that fucking makes sense you're gonna have that and that's what the future of of games and services is 
It's this idea of just because Overwatch did it and Destiny has done it doesn't necessarily mean that your game can do it, but publishers don't see it that way. They just see an opportunity to make money, and if it fails, it fails. They will hop on this until they make money out of it. This is a fad, maybe. Maybe it is just like when Call of Duty came out and was so big, everybody needed a Call of Duty game. I see the same thing. I don't think single-player games are dying. I think they're shrinking. And I think who who implements single-player games, who, who, who actually creates them, are going to change. I don't think it's AAA games anymore that we're going to see those big, those beautiful stories that we as gamers love and come to expect. I think they're in the AA spaces. I think they're in games like Hellblade. I think they're in games like uh, Cuphead. I think that's where the future of single-player games at the moment lies in. People that are really passionate to tell a great story at at no cost, right? At no compromise. Those are the people that are going to make great things. People like CD Projekt Red, people like Insomniac Games will continue to make great fantastic games. People who are independent, who don't or are, are, are not subservient to these AAA publishers or to some higher power, uh, those people are going to succeed. Uh, one person last night brought up Sony and trying to hold Sony to this higher standard saying, well, you know, Sony, if you got to take a look at it, it's one of the last major publishers out there, and yes, they are a publisher, that are doing single-player games. Look at Horizon, look at Bloodborne, look at God of War, look at Detroit, look at Spider-Man. And I say hold your breath, because Last of Us 2 is around the corner. They're big tentpole game. Remember Last of Us 1? They had microtransactions in that game. Of course, it was dumb stuff like masks and like all these outfits, but they had microtransactions in that game. Don't kid yourself here. You know, this is what the future of games is until we as gamers say enough is enough. It is not about, hey, if you don't like it, just don't buy it. It's not about that anymore. If you don't like it, don't buy it entirely. Don't buy the base product. Do not buy the microtransaction. Do not buy the game at all. If you don't like it, wait till it is the price that you would buy it at. Wait, and, and if that is zero, then don't buy it at all. If you think Shadow of War, if you're still on the fence about it, don't buy it. Wait till it's 40 bucks. Wait till it's 30 bucks. Wait till they throw the Game of the Year edition for $2 on PSN. Whatever you think the price of that game is, pay for it. That's what I say to you guys. When I look at Battlefront 2, am I going to buy that game day one as much as I'm a huge Star Wars fan? Am I going to reward DICE and EA for shitty behavior? No. As much as I love Star Wars, as much as I waited for for tickets until 2 a.m. For that, for that movie, and I'll be seeing The Last Jedi at 1.30 a.m. and pumped, I'm not going to go reward EA. I'm not going to reward dice for putting things that should be in the game already outside behind a paywall i'm not gonna reward that behavior I'm not gonna reward abilities being locked behind my progression fuck that no I'm not gonna buy it i'm gonna wait until it's a price that i feel is necessary so i think that is a wait till it's pre-owned or you know borrow a friend's copy to play the single player that's where i'm going to to, to draw the line so much as I, I love the passion and and some of the people behind that game i think the lead actress is passionate and really believes in what she's selling as much as i love mitch, mitch dyer i'm not gonna buy that game because i need to vote with my wallet because it's not so much about the publishers or developers but it's about me and it's about supporting the publishers and developers that are doing the right thing so with that said, with that all out of the way, I know this is a big rant, but again, I don't think we could be as harsh as we are to EA. I think we need to be harsh to ourselves for letting it get this far. I really do believe that. You know, I still play games like Overwatch, and I love Overwatch, and I still think Overwatch does it the best in terms of microtransactions, because Overwatch does it and is successful at it and does it right, mean that every single game should do it, and that every single game needs it, because not everyone does. I think that publishers need to 
actually go and look at themselves and say, well, maybe a season pass is the way to go and actually make the season passes something that players look forward to and actually want. Look at The Witcher 3. Look at Uncharted. Those two pieces of DLC, those little stories that they made, 30, 40 bucks a pop, are really good stories to tell. They're really good pieces of content. They're worth their money. And people have bought them because of it. So I think publishers need to need to get better at making content outside of after the game's release rather than trying to block what is being built right now. And I think gamers, we have to get over this dumb obsession of just because something looks really good means it's really good. Because guess what? The Xbox One could look beautiful but run like a piece of shit. We don't know. Yeah, it could look beautiful, but are people gonna put their play their their four K, you know, graphics or, or, or renders on there? We don't know, right? So, with that said, with that all out of the way, I know this was a big rant, but I think it needed to be said. I want to know what you guys think of games and services. Do you think they're a fad? Do you think they're awful? Do you think they're good? Let me know in the comment section down below. I want to know what you guys feel about the visceral EA situation. Let me know in the comment section down below. I hope everybody at Visceral finds employment ASAP because it, it it is a horrible situation and they're beyond talented. I saw Insomniac Games in a tweet um, go, hey guys, we are hiring over here. Um, so if you if you want to move to North Carolina, let's let's go. Let's make let's make some beautiful video games. And and I love that. Insomniac, I think over the years has really been a force for positive conversations rather than this calling people out like Cliff Blazinski has. And I'm not trying to be a dick to him, but I think Insomniac has really been a good positive force of, of of positive conversation and positive change so um again thank you guys uh, for making this possible thank you mickey thank you mr moody thank you nasty boots and with all that said please like share subscribe because it helps me out shows me that you care look at me get all enthusiastic at that point with all that said and all that out of the way everybody have a nice one keep your wits about you and i said that backwards